Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number 10 from the June 2023 20, Pure Mathematics P2 exam from Edexcel. Okay, this is the international A level paper, and the question here is about a curve which has equation y equals x minus k squared over root x, and x is greater than zero, where we have to show k is a positive constant. Now they have bold typed positive so it means it's something important for us to keep in our mind so you should keep that in the mind from the beginning of the question all right some students they read they, they skim skim read they don't take into account some important words okay they've done us a little favor there by bold typing it but that means it's going to be something important for us maybe later on in the question so please make sure you keep that in mind when you are um, answering this question k is a positive constant okay now it says show that and it's told us to show that the integral of this curve with respect to x between the limits of 1 and 16 is given by a k squared plus b k plus 2 over 6 2 over 4 6 over 5 where a and b are integers to be found okay so we have to write it in terms of k but a and b we have to write their actual values so let's think about how we're going to deal with this so let's integrate this. Now, before we can integrate this, we have to get it ready for integration. So I've got x minus k all squared divided by the square root of x. So what I'm going to do first, I'll write this in index form. So I have x to the power of a half in the denominator. And when I, when I um, uh, simplify this, I'm going to write the x to the power of a half on top. So it'll be x to the power of negative a half times x minus k squared for me to be able to integrate this i have to expand this bracket and write each term separately so if i do that i'm going to have x to the power of minus a half times x so when you multiply two numbers in index form um well before i do that sorry i have to expand this, the second bracket first because it's squared so i have x to the power of minus a half times i'm going to expand this bracket this is a squared bracket, so I'll square the first term. That will give me x squared. Then I'm going to multiply these together and double it. So it's minus 2kx. Remember, k is a constant, so I'll write that first. And then I'm going to um, um, square the, the last term. So minus k all squared is going to be plus k squared. That's squaring that bracket. And now I can uh, get it ready for integration by expanding this bracket and writing everything as a separate term. So I've got x to the power of minus a half times x squared now when I multiply two numbers in index form with the same base um, I add the powers I will add the powers so this will be a to the power of m times a to the power of n you're going to get a to the power of m plus n so I'm going to add minus a half and two so minus a half plus two is like one and a half so that's three over two that's going to be x to the power of three over two all right then I have x to the power of minus a half times minus 2kx. So you'll have minus 2k. And again, you're going to add the powers. Now, this has a power of 1. So it doesn't have to be written there. So it's x is x to the power of 1. So minus a half plus 1 is going to give you a half. So it's 2kx to the power of a half. And then we're going to do x to the power of minus a half times um, k squared. So you're going to get plus kx to the power of negative a half. So this now is this expression. Um, in terms of k and it's now in a form that can be integrated easily so now I'm going to do the actual integration the limits between 1 and 16 of our expression which I'm going to put in a bracket x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2k x to the power of 1 over 2 plus k x to the power of negative 1 over 2 and we integrate that with respect to x okay so when we do this um, once we start integrating, so this is now ready to be integrated. Once we start integrating, what we do is we put a, a square bracket here. And we don't um, put the integral sign once we started integrating. So here we got to add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So 3 over 2 plus 1 is going to be 3 over 2 plus 2 over 2, which is 5 over 2. So x to the power of 5 over 2 divided by the new power divided by 5 over 2. Okay, I'm going to do this step by step to make it clear for those who may be not sure. And then I'm going to have 2kx to the power of, 
add one to the power, half plus one is three over two. I'm going to divide that by three over two, divide by the new power. Remember the K, you don't do anything with the K, K is just a number. You're not integrating with respect to K, you don't add one power, add one to the power of K or anything like that. Okay, um, by the way, that should say K squared. Sorry about that. That's bad. That's K squared because that was K squared. I missed that out in that. Okay, uh, so be very careful. That's supposed to say K squared. So that's K squared X power minus half and K squared X power minus half. So just um, don't make silly mistakes like that. Good thing I spotted it early. All right, so now the next term will be plus K squared and you have X power minus half. You add one to the power. Minus a half plus one is positive a half and then you divide by the new power. So I'm not doing anything with the power of K. Okay, that was from the beginning. Why? Because it's just a constant. I'm integrating with respect to x. So now I'm going to put my limits of 1 and 16. Okay. Um, but before I do that, let me just simplify this expression here. So when you divide by a fraction, it's like you're multiplying by its reciprocal. So if you divide by 5 over 2, it's like you're multiplying by 2 fifths. So 2 fifths x to the power of 5 over 2 minus, and you're going to have 2, two divided by... 3 over 2 is going to be 2 times 2 over 3, which is 4 over 3. So you have 4 over 3 times k times x to the power of 3 over 2. And you're going to have plus. And dividing by a half is like multiplying by 2. So it's 2 times k squared times x to the power of a half. Okay. And your limits are 16 and 1. Okay. So now we start putting the values in. All right. So I'm going to put instead of, oh, before I do that, actually, I'm going to actually write this in a slightly different way so that it's easy for us to put values in. So I know that something in index form like to the power 5 over 2, the numerator is the power and the denominator is the root. So this is like saying 2 fifths times the square root of x to the power 5. And minus 4 over 3 times k times the square root of x to the power of 3. And you have plus 2 times k squared times the square root of x. Okay, so I've just made it a bit uh, kind of more friendly for substituting values in. So this is going to give me now put 16 instead of x first, and then 1 instead of x and subtract them. So I have 2 fifths times the square root of 16 to the power of 5 minus 4 over 3 times k times the square root of 16 to the power of 3 plus 2k squared times the square root of 16 minus, and I'm going to do the same thing, but put 1 in there, so 2 fifths times the square root of 1 to the power 5, minus 4 over 3k times the square root of 1 to the power 3, plus 2k squared times the square root of 1. Okay, so now we're going to simplify this a little bit and get our answers. So this is going to be like the square root of 4 to the power, the square root of 60, which is 4 to the power 5. So what's 4 to the power 5? Let's work that out. Okay, so we'll have, I'll just put it as it is. So you have 2 over 5, okay, times the square root of 16 to the power of 5. So I'll just put it as it is. And that gives us 2048 divided by 5. So that's 2048 divided by 5 minus, and you're going to have 4 over 3 times, I'll do this as well. Let me just do this as well. 4 over 3 times the square root of 16 cubed. So I'm going to have um, 4 over 3 times the square root of 16 to the power of 3. Okay, and that gives us 256 over 3. So that's two, 256. Oops, what's happened? The pen has not come back yet. 256 over 3k. All right, that's times k. Plus, and this is going to be, uh, we can work this out ourselves, square root of 16 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, that's 8k squared. And now, what we'll notice here is when you take the square root of 1, you get 1. When you raise 1 to the power of 5, you get 1. You know, if you raise a 1 to the power of anything, you're going to get 1, whether it's, you know, um, any, any number, right? So, you know, 1 to the power of 5, like 1 to the power of 5 over 2, 1 to the power of... 3 over 2, 1 to the power of 1 over 2, it's all going to be 1. So this is going to be 2 fifths times once you have minus, keep this in a bracket to, to protect it, this is minus 2 fifths, minus 4 over 3k, plus 2k squared. 
Okay, so now we end up with our answer. So we're going to have two over four, two thousand and forty over five minus two fifths. That's two hundred and forty six over five, and we have minus two five of minus two five six minus minus um, yeah minus um, you're going to have plus. Okay, so that's going to be minus two five six over three. K plus 4 over 3K. All right, and you're going to have 8K squared minus um, 2K squared, which is going to give us um, 6K squared. Okay. Okay, so now we can just simplify this. So um, that's going to give us 2046 over 5 minus 252 over 3k plus 6k squared. Now 252 over 3, um, I think that um, 3 goes into 252. Seems like it because it adds up to 9, the digit, so it's divisible by 3. 252 divided by 3, it must do because we need, to, we need integers here. Yes, 84, good. So we can say now that our final answer here is going to be 6K squared minus 84K, okay, and plus 2046 over 5. And let's make sure that that's in the right format. Something K squared plus something K plus 2046 over 5. So it seems like we're in the right tracks. It's just that the A happens to become 6 now, and the B is negative 84, and we have the answer to part A. Okay, a bit of a long-winded thing here, but first of all, we have to get it ready for integration, and then integrate and be very careful with our values and our signs, but we end up with the answer. That's part A. Now we're going to do part B. So it says here, Figure 1 shows a sketch of the curve C. So this is a sketch of the curve, which we just dealt with, and the line L. And the line L passes through the point A, which is 1, 9, and the point B, which is 16, and Q, where we don't know what, we don't know what Q is. Q is a constant, right? Show that K equals 4. All right, so now, we can see that the curve passes through the point A. Okay, so A, you can say A lies on the curve C, on the curve C, okay? Therefore, it satisfies the equation of the curve. That means when you put A is a point 1, 9, that means when X equals 1, Y is going to equal 9 in this equation. In the equation, Y equals X minus K squared over root X. So if I replace the Y with 9, okay, then the x with 1, I'll end up with basically this, okay? Because the y is 9 and the x is 1. The square root of 1 is 1, so you end up with this. Now, we want to find what k is. So what we can do is we can take the positive and negative square root of both sides of the equation. So we end up with 1 minus k is equal to plus or minus root 9, okay? Which is going to be plus or minus 3. So 1 minus k is equal to plus or minus 3. Now, that will tell us that 1 plus or minus 3 is equal to k. So, therefore, k can be either 1 plus 3, which is 4, or k equals 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. If we go back to what we highlighted at the beginning, k is a positive constant. All right, so we know that we're going to reject this answer here, and this answer is true, so therefore we can say k is equal to 4. Okay, so that's something for us to understand. All right, again, this, um, you know, we, we should know that to reject this answer, okay, because it says k is a positive constant. That's why k is equal to 4 only. All right, so there's the answer to part B. Now for part C, it says the region R, shown shaded in this figure 1, is bounded by the curve C, and the line L, using the answer to parts A and B, find the area of the region R. Okay, so this is what we've got so far, okay, um, from our um, previous work. So we know the value of 
this was 6, this is minus 84. Now we know that k equals 4, so we can actually find the value for this integral. So I can say that the, um, the, the region that we're looking for, this region, is the area between these two points. So let me just... Um, the area between A and B, between the curve and the line. Okay, so what we have so far is the area under the curve. That's what we've got so far. So what we've got in this question so far is this area over here. We've got this area between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, this is the integral that we've got there, the shaded region. All right, so this integral between 1, see this, see this is 1, and this is 16. So it's exactly the right limits. So this is that area. So we can say that the region R, the area of region R, is given by the, the area under the trapezium. Okay, the trapezium. Okay, this is a trapezium area. We can find that by working out some things. So the trapezium area minus, okay, the integral between 1 and 16 of uh, y with respect to x, okay, the equation that we, we had to deal with in the beginning, right? So this will give us our answer. So we need to find a few things here. To find the area of this trapezium, find the area of this whole trapezium between O, A, B, and 16, this, this whole trapezium, we need to find the y-coordinate we need to find what Q is. Okay, so we need Q to find the area of the trapezium because we need the distance between the parallel sides, which is 15, divided by the sum of the parallel sides. Well, that, that is 9, but we, we need to know what that is. So for us to do that, what we could do, um, we could um, replace um, 16 in this equation and find what Q is. So I know that y equals x minus k squared over root x. So when x is equal to 16, we can find what y is, and that will give us the value of q. So when x is 16, y is equal to, and remember k we know is 4 now, so the equation of the curve is um, x minus 4 squared over root x. So we can replace the k with the 4, which I've just done there and we can now replace now x with 16 so this is going to be um, 16 minus 4 squared over root 16 okay 16 minus 4 squared over root 16 that gives you 12 squared which is 144 over 4 okay and 144 over 4 gives us 36 so that's 36 so this is 36 so we can say that this 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 length here from there to there is 36 this length here is 9 and this length here is 15 the distance between the parallel sides so we can say r is equal to the area of the trapezium which is the distance between the parallel sides 15 divided by 2 times the sum of the parallel sides which is from 0 to 9 plus 0 to 36 that's the area of the whole trapezium. And if we subtract from that the area that we just found earlier, which is going to be this area here, but now we know k is 4. So it's going to be minus, you're going to have 6 times 4 squared minus 84 times 4 plus 204, 2046 over 5. Okay, that will give us the region R. Okay, so let's just put that in a calculator and it should give us our answer. So we have 15 over 2 times 9 plus 36. Okay, that gives us 675 over 2. 675 over 2 minus, and we put this in our calculator as well. So we have 6 times 16 minus. 84 times 4 plus 2046 over 5. Okay, so that's going to give us 
A46 over 5, 846 over 5. I don't know where these dots are appearing everywhere. Depends in the middle, measles or something. All right, so now I subtract those and that should be my answer. So I have 675 over 2. Minus the last answer, and that gives us 1683 over 10. So R is equal to 1683 over 10. Okay, we can say 168.3 square units. Okay, so that is the value of the region R. Okay, that's the area of the region R. Okay, so that concludes this question. It's quite a long question. Question number 10, it's about integration mainly but a few other bits here as well um and that basically is that question done I think there's one question left now in the paper question 11 other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here at the end of the video other questions from the topic of integration of p2 can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and watch the video linked above here to, to, to learn how to use my channel to find what you're looking for efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.